Hey there, <laughs> we're live. Yeah. Welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton here with Cadence. Cadence got dressed up for the occasion. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna do a demo tonight using mixed lighting. So that is flash with constant light or ambient light or light that's already there, however you wanna call it. Um, somebody's already correcting in the comments saying that ambient light is not, but available light, ambient light, constant light light that's not flash, right? That's what we're gonna to use today. The, the concept is the same. We're gonna use light we're creating because it's easier for me to show you, but the techniques I use today, you can use with like window light and stuff like that as well. So um, we're gonna also, uh, Seth was nice enough to loan me his brand new Nikon Z9 You know camera. the name of the camera, stop trying to be cool. I, I, I was like, what, no Z10, Seth? Come on. And not only that, he's got the 24 to 120 lens. So. I will try to go through. <laughs> I will try to go through all the gear I'm using as I go. If I forget, feel free to ask, and I will tell you. Also, in the description of the video, there should be listing most of the lighting, anyways. Um, so, what we're going to do here is we're going to start off uh, kind of discussing how to get exposure in each one and why we might do it, and then we'll create some images of the combined light. So, first of all, um, we want to talk about the difference, right? Because people ask, "What's the difference?" And so, I mean, the kind of generic jokey thing that I might say. When people used to walk up to me all the time and be like, Daniel, what's the difference between flash and a constant light? And I would say, well, you know, a flash flashes, <laughs> right? But that's really, the, right, so a fl what's happening is a flash is, is giving a sudden burst of really, really bright light for a very, very short amount of time. What that gives you effectively is the ability generally to freeze action, right? Also, it gives you the ability to kind of overcome light in the space without completely blinding somebody. If, if it was the middle of the day and I wanted to get the sky dark outside, let's say, uh, you know, when I was using a constant light source, it would have to be crazy, crazy bright, obviously as bright as the sun. You really don't want that light too close to you <laughs> for very long anyways, right? So we don't want to do that. Uh, sometimes, you know, movies will do stuff where they set up huge lights and stuff, but they're also blocking the sun and everything else. So, you know, as a photographer, somebody working on a small scale, that you're not going to be able to do that. So a flash is going to give you a lot of versatility working both inside and out. Why would you use a constant light then? Well, there's a lot of uh, kind of reasons you might do that. One is that you're probably already used to using light that's already there, right? If you're started, if you're doing photography now or videography, videography, that's a word, right? Yeah, so you would be, <laughs> you know, you're already kind of using the light, right? You've, I'm, I'm doing it right now in this room using this, right? We're creating images with the light that's around us. The constant light sources are gonna allow us to shape it. I'm gonna use some specialized sources tonight, some uh, RGBW tubes and also a data light that's a focusing light. Um, because I feel like that's why I would use a lot of constant lights. You can get panels and stuff like that, which will give you similar effect to like, let's say soft boxes, which we're gonna use for the flashes. But I feel like as a photographer, you generally wanna use flash for that kind of stuff. But anyways, getting into it, let's just start with some basic exposures and we'll go from there. I am gonna go with a little bit of a higher IS, ISO tonight. I'm gonna close this door because it's really loud. Um, because I know when we get to the ambient light, or not the ambient light, but the constant light, we're gonna end up with needing to, uh, you know, need more light. So we're gonna start at 400 ISO and we're gonna work that way. So let's start with the flash exposure. We can see, uh, and this is what we do all the time. Here we are in the space. Um, if, if I were to make a photo, it's at 200 of a, 200 of a second, F8, 400 ISO. If I make an image, we're going to have a black frame. So that's pretty common, right? I do that every time and you can actually see Actually, if you shoot a lot of black frames, this camera is very good for that. <laughs> if anybody gets that reference, go ahead and put it in the chat. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> this is a Profoto B10 flash, okay? If I leave my camera set exactly the same way and I turn on my remote on top, which allows me to fire the flash, and I use something called TTL, which is through the lens metering, right? People often ask me, why aren't you using a light meter? I'm using the meter in the camera. That's what we're gonna do all day. I can use this flash. Probably blocking. What's that? Okay. I can use this flash to essentially make an image of cadence. Let me make sure everything's set up right. Yeah, it is. Okay, here we go. And we can see that, of course, there's an image there. She's properly exposed. Look at that, she's got green eyes and also a green dress. <laughs> Almost like we did that on purpose, <laughs> right? The light's pretty, we can see. So again, in this space with this exposure, no flash, 
flash, right? Now, if I use the exact same exposure, and I take my constant light, this is a dado light, DLED 7, I believe. I'm going to turn this on. Usually, if you're turning on a hot light, it's a good idea to not only tell the subject that, but also put your hand in front of it. I like how you put it up and take it away. <laughs> and then remove it really quickly. No, no, leave them on for now. I want, just want to do the same exposure. So we can see, I'm sure that if I put this real close, you know, because we'll cheat, probably on the video cameras, she looks really, really bright, I'm assuming. And if we make a, sh a shot like this, oops, how about we do it without the flash? Oh, there's a special button on the side here. Seth showed me. Let's see if I can, uh, it's the middle one, top one, top one. There we go, look at that. You can actually just hold down this button, and then no flash will fire, and we'll get basically that. Okay, so much, much darker shot. Right, flash, no, so no flash, flash, constant light source at the same exposure, right? That doesn't mean you can't obviously work with the constant light, it just means that obviously we're going to need more light to get done what we want to get done. Which is going to work to our advantage if we want to do any kind of motion because then we have more time for the subject to do that, right? So let's talk about that for a second. I'll not blind you with this the whole day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. If we want to mix these light sources together, how do we do it? Well, generally speaking, if you are adjusting your ISO or your aperture, your entire exposure will go up and down, right? It's gonna go up and down whether you're using the flash or a constant light. If you adjust your shutter speed in these circumstances, it will only adjust the exposure for the constant light. So we're gonna use that as our, as our means to mix the lights together. We're gonna to find a, an exposure that we like, and then we're going to, with the flash of this, and then we're gonna adjust our shutter speed to bring the constant light in the way that we wanna do it. So let's just do something really simple to start with. Um, let's start, go back to the softbox. <laughs> Again, this is a two foot by three foot softbox by Profoto. It's in a, um, it's on, I should say, a, a Profoto B10, which is a battery powered flash. Okay. Uh, and let's say we're gonna do like a, let's do a hair light. I'll light it this way, I'll go this way with it. Lovely. So let's say we want to give a little bit of a kicker or a hair light with our constant light source. Or let's say this was the sun, right? And we wanted to balance it. Again, same kind of concept. All right, so we're gonna turn it on. This time I'll leave my hand in front of it long enough. <laughs> I'm actually just using the barn door here to not shine the light directly into my lens. Try to prevent any kind of lens flare. And we'll do that. All right. I can also focus this light, but we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. All right, so I'm going to turn off the overheads here so we get a better idea of what's going on. Oh, okay, that's a good question. So the data light's at 100%. The Profoto was at uh, 5.9, so let's just say 6. So that would be... Uh, half, quarter, eight, uh, six, 16th, 16th power, one sixteenth power. Through a softbox, further away, one sixteenth power. All right, so again, I'm looking through the camera. What's nice about using the constant light is that I can really see where everything's falling nicely. So if you're trying to you know, work out your exposure. Maybe I'm gonna have you favor the hop. Yeah, do you mind if I do that so they can see? Oh, sure, you can do that. She turned on the modeling light. Uh, he turned on the modeling light. Uh, mess up your I'll turn it off when I go to shoot. Okay. Actually, I don't know if that matters. Does the modeling light turn off automatically? Let's test something. You want to know what We're gonna, uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to set the, the, mo the modeling light to dim in between flashes. So hopefully it won't affect our shot, but we'll find out in a second. It shouldn't. Whoa, where is it? Oh, wait, it's the sound. Yeah. There we go. So what's going to happen is when we make this photo, the, the modeling light, so the constant light that's going on in the pro photo, will actually dim down uh, temporarily. Okay, so favorite this one. Perfect. All right. 
Let's cut that part out. Hmm. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly the, the, the look. <laughs> right. So we can see here, right, that, of course, to the video, it seems like there's a beautiful hair light going on. Um, and, of course, the strobe on there. But to our still photo. <laughs> what is that? My trigger is with to, to the my trigger's been through a lot. Yeah, it has been. It's saying yeah. like Seth, give me a better home. It's it's really been through a lot. So um, <laughs> we can see we don't see any hair light, right? I'm so lucky. yeah, look at it. So in order to bring the uh, bring the hair light in, what we can do is we can adjust our shutter speed. I don't know if you want to change the batteries. I do not have any extra batteries okay. because I am unprepared. But no, that battery light always goes on. All right, here we go. I think I dropped this thing one too many times. You're good right there. <laughs> yes, it's also very old. What the? It's, no, I'm, I'm taking pictures without trying. Although, no, it's just firing. Okay, here we go. No, you know what's happening? I think, the, I think you're right, the battery's toast. Battery's freaking out, right? Yeah, have you got to? I'll use my I'll use my A10. Okay, so it looks like the batteries are dead in my remote. Yeah, I had a whole thing of them, and I realized that there was none here today. All right. <clears throat> That's how you know it's a live stream. Okay, so we're gonna go over something new. <laughs> well, there was a whole stack of them here, and they're no longer. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> He's loving it. All right, so this is a Profoto A10. It's a on-camera flash, speed light, and actually on the 27th of January, so in three weeks, we're going to actually do an entire live stream about using small flashes, so I'm not going to get too far into it. But this can actually be used um, as a trigger. So effectively, I can use it as a trigger, which is what we're going to do here because somebody, you know, some studio mate of mine, I'm not going to say it was Seth, uh, you rigged, rigged it so I had no batteries. Yeah, you, you, you totally prepared to tell me shut up the... Uh... I just wanted to make sure I was working. Okay, good. All right, here we go. So we've got it. We're, we're set up here. We can see that it's, it's far too bright. Um, uh, I, I'm, it's not bright enough on the side. I'm going to basically press this button here on the side of the camera. The top is you programmed, right? That's not like a real thing. And what I, I can look through the camera, and I can see that our hair light is not there, as you guys know as well. So I'm going to adjust my shutter speed down until I start to see the hair light come in, which is about right there. And then we're going to come back. And now we're going to have a bit of a hair light coming in. Again, doesn't need to be a lot. I'm at a 50th of a second, F8. Now, obviously, yes, I could very easily um, also open the lens up more if I wanted to, right? You could do either thing. I'm just trying to stay consistent so you guys can see the difference. The strobe exposure did not change. It's still sharp, even at a 50th of a second, because, you know, because the strobe's firing. And the hair light is here. Now, if I were to go even slower, let's say we like a really dramatic hair light, and we go down to a 15th of a second, right, we can see that, again, the strobe is firing. She's still super sharp there. And the hair is actually, she's not really moving, so we're not having too much trouble with the hair still. We just want to be... Uh, cognizant of the fact that a 15th of a second is what's going on here. So if she was moving, so we'll have you move a little bit. If she's moving around, boom. What we may end up with is some blurriness here, right, from that 15th of a second. Now the strobe is going to still freeze her, right? So as long as we don't cross the streams, we should be good to go here. So for these kind of things, it's pretty good. You can obviously also use this as a special effect if you want a little bit of blur, a little action. We can mess with that a little bit at the end. Because I'm sure somebody's going to want to see that. Because that, that, that's that's Seth's favorite favorite thing to get the motion. I haven't popped with this camera yet. He, 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 Seth is a master of this. I know how to do it. Seth is very good at it. All right, so let's let's say okay. So we got the data light. It's really beautiful. It's cool. This light is really not about 
just using it as a hair light to me, right? This light is a focusable light. It's used to create a nice hard light to create some shape. So let's not use this for a second. Let's switch over and let's use something that might be a little more interesting as a hair light. Let's use a, a tube, right? We have these RGBW tubes here. These are from Nanlite. You can't, well, I should put it in the, okay. Okay, can they see it here or no? Okay, so this is an RGBW tube. It's like a foot long, um, like a hot dog. Like a Coney Island hot dog. <laughs> if you're on a Coney Island. Like a hot Actually, dog. Actually, I think it's 10 inches. <laughs> and I've got it on this uh, little small rig arm. And this is really overbuilt. This is how you know that you're like hardcore. This is that I have like $300 worth of arm and stand to hold the $70 light. All right, so what we can do with this is we can actually put it into, we'll bring it up a little bit. We can put it into this color mode where we can actually change the color and make it whatever color we like. We have this nice warm color. Um, and let's bring it up nice and bright. And we're gonna use this as our separation or hair light. Let's try, let's try that. So I'll come over the side with it. And again, this is not nearly as bright. So we're gonna have to really play around with this to get the look we want. This is almost like maybe you got some warm light coming in from another room, that kind of vibe going on. Okay. So we've got this here, and again, to the video camera, I'm sure that looks really bright. It's not, it's not really bright. <laughs> Right, the, 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 the way you want to look at this is there's, uh, I'm actually stealing this from Seth, who was the first person I've heard, ever heard say it, which I thought was a great way to explain it. You're making two exposures. One exposure consists of your ISO, your, your uh, shutter speed, and your, you know, your aperture, which is your flash. The other one is mostly based on your shutter speed, which is the constant light, okay? Something like that. I probably didn't say it as elegantly as, Seth speaks eloquently. Yeah. <laughs> that accent that just in, you know? Right. <laughs> right. So we can see here that <laughs> we brought this in, and again, because she's moving, we've got a little bit of blur, right, and we've got some color. And in fact, it's kind of infiltrating the background a little bit here, um, you know, and getting kind of that like peachy color. Now, let's say we want a little more control so we can get the background separated. I've got this softbox here. I do not have a grid. Cliff never sent me a grid. Thanks. <laughs> Right, and this is where TTL is really good, guys, because I'm gonna come in real close with the softbox, and I've already got everything worked out, more or less how I like it. I don't really have to mess around too much. As long as I keep my constant exposure correct, I'm gonna be able to use TTL, and it should correct the exposure on her face. Yeah, there we go. So we've still got a decent exposure on her face. Again, I am metering. I'm using TTL through the lens metering. That's what the, flat, the, what the softbox is doing. And effectively, I'm metering the constant light by looking at it, right? I can see a constant exposure because I'm using the, the back of the screen, which is, of course, this is a mirrorless camera. There's actually no mirrors at all on this camera, not a single one. Ooh, look this way. Or shutter. Or shutter, there's no mirror or <laughs> It's not even a camera. It's literally just, it, yeah. It's a magic box. It's a magic box. <laughs> right, so we can see, again, nice and sharp here. And then over here, if she doesn't move, this will also stay relatively sharp. But you know, you, that's what you want to be aware of as we're doing this. And we can use these color LEDs. And yes, you could use a gel, but I can just walk over here like this and go, oh, you know what? I love when Dan thinks he's showing you technology. Like, Look at this light, they can do the colors. Because of that, I'm going to do the thing that Seth does. I'm still, I wasn't going to do it. I was not going to do this, but there you go. Now I got to do it. Let's say that Ka let's say let's say Cadence doesn't know what color light she wants. Oh well, look, maybe she wants that color. <laughs> well, that color, <laughs> gray. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Somehow I shot gray. I don't know how. I'm, I'm the only person in the world that can shoot gray on a work this way into the color. There we go. We can do a blue. Right, but you know, once you figure, okay, so she likes blue, right? She's like, oh, blue looks nice. So now we can come back over here, because you wouldn't want to just leave this going. 
Unless you're at like a party or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> he just put his on a stand and leave it at a party. Clearly, when you go to parties with me, that's what you he's, get. He's getting better. He used to call them discos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I call it discos, discos. I'm talking about like a house party. He's at a disco tech. <laughs> yeah, now we got like a blue. And we're like, oh, look, blue. And we can very, very simply, again, work into the blue. I actually come this way, and there we go. I want to go toward your face. And we can, we can kind of get that moody blue going. Uh, moody blues, that's a, a band. There you go. Right, easy as that. So you've seen us do a million different colors on the gray back background before with Flash by changing the gels. The, the new technology <laughs> of the art, it's relatively new. It's new that it's good. Let me just say that. Because I have been on re registered in videos being an LED hater. These are good, like the technology is finally there. So we're able to basically have color changing really quick and easy. Is, is there a lot of power? What's the downside, right? You're like, well, I'll we'll do this all the time then. I don't even need flash. Remember, we're shooting at a 15th of a second. So if we were only using the constant light sources, we'd need to use a much higher ISO if we want to keep this F8 that we're shooting at, right? So this is, you just have to, it's a compromise. That's why mixing them together is really useful. Let's get something a little more funky. Not that there's anything more funky than that. I mean, that's the funkiest color ever. Light. Color changing light is funky. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, if, if there's something that I'm, I'm going too fast, let me know. I'm gonna kind of start over in a sense on this next setup, so we'll, work, we'll walk our way through it. Let me know if there's anything, your, your questions, if something seems off, and we'll kind of, uh, we'll pace our way through. So again, let's start from scratch. Here we are. And again, I'm not using this flash on top. It's just there for as a trigger. Here we are. We want to make a, a let's say, a dramatic, a dramatic portrait of, of Cadence. So what's the first thing that we ever bust out when we want to do something dramatic? A beauty dish. Like, if you don't know what to use, it, yeah, use a beauty dish. People love beauty dishes. It has the word beauty in it. It's, it has dish in it, which, I mean, people like dishes. Now, what's the difference between a dish and a plate? Isn't a dish literally concave convex? Well, like a bowl? So a bowl is a dish, not a plate? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because sometimes people say, you know, wash the dishes, and then, and then you might plate up the food. Let us know in the chat what the difference between a dish and a plate Someone is. Someone Google it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a topic people want to know about. All right, so we're gonna, I'm actually gonna do, uh, you know, since the chat loves this, I'm gonna go a little bit Rembrandt. <laughs> there, there was this painting, this was this painter named. You know what, if you're gonna do that, get a sandbag and move. I'm not booming it. I don't care. All right, fine, fine. You're gonna start doing the most overused lighting in history. <laughs> Would you take the day off today? I'm going to show you this color-changing light that Frank <laughs> Listen, I'm going for the algorithm. <laughs> it's the beginning of the year. We're going to edge our way into this. All right. All right, so now, so we're going to come in here and we're going to do something a little more. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> Maybe just look straight ahead. That's how they do it in Rembrandt paintings. <laughs> what did I do there? Yes, I fired that light. And I also didn't turn off the overhead lights and I left my shutter speed slow. So basically, every combination of things that could have gone bad went bad there. Okay, we killed that guy, right? Okay. No, no, I'm gonna bring my shutter speed back up because we're starting from scratch. Again, I'm going to bring my shutter speed up to 200th of a second, which is you know, the sync speed that I like to shoot at. Uh, we're at F8 because you know that's what they do around here. And then 400th of a second, we're gonna get a little bit of a uh, kind of a dramatic light, right? With the, It feels a little hot. Oh, it's so dark in here. Okay, this is useless in the street. Let me just check. I just want to see some. Okay, no. Okay. I'm scared. All right. So I'm just making sure everything else was off. Okay, so the, the exposure is just a little hot. All right. So I'm going to make an adjustment to my exposure. Uh, da, 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 da. This is the A light.
Okay, here we go. There we go. All right, it's not Rembrandt at all. I never do Rembrandt even though I say I'm going to. So we've got this kind of more dramatic light, a little bit punchy. I wanna move it a little closer actually. You know, we'll do it, we'll do a classic. <clears throat> you know, I like to. I'm gonna do more of the butterfly light because that's what I like to do. We knew we were gonna go there eventually. I might as well have just done it to start with. By the way, this is what I'm using here to manipulate the light. It's called a magic finger. Got a lot of questions about that. Well, yeah, they're, they're a little on back order, so order one now, so you'll eventually get it when Matthews gets, finishes making them. Matthews is like two guys in, out in California making stuff. Because they're making like two or three versions of it now, so there might be something. Yeah, there's other versions. There's also an, there's a version that's not an entire arm as well, right. where you can just put on the end of it. So it's definitely a worthwhile purchase if you use a lot of C-stands. So basically, I'm going to use this magic finger to get my light into the center, like this. We're going to... Have it perfect. This lens is so long, it's like a 120. I might not give this back. All right, so again, the ambient light is not going to really make a difference. We've got this kind of punchy light in here. But let's say we want to use our uh, constant light as a fill. We want to do like a color fill to bring the shadows up a little bit. We can do the same thing, right? We can bring this around to the front. Not only can we do this, we can, it'll get, might get cool catch lights as well. You, you, I, you know, I don't know if people in the chat are catch light people. Some people are catch light people. Some people are not catch light people. Seth likes absolutely no catch lights. I, you know, I could go either way. I mean, you know. Right. That, that, this, this is what Seth thinks about catch lights. Are you having a seizure? What is that? All right. All right. Off with the lights. Stop making me laugh. All right. We're going to do this so that, that you can see me. Actually, the whole room is blue. Oh, OK. It's, it's blue. And, oh, yeah. That's cool. You can see her. I can see it up there. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this to be our fill light. So of course, when I'm looking at it with my eye, that looks tremendously bright. But, but as we just saw, Again, the flash is gonna overpower it. We're gonna barely get any blue at all. It's just going to come into the shadows a little bit. And we can adjust how much blue is in the shadow. Actually, see where you see it the most is a reflection on the, uh, the sequence. So we can bring more blue into the shadows by again, adjusting our shutter speed. So I will, I push this little button on top. Oh, I'm gonna become addicted to this button. This is very useful. And I'm basically gonna uh, dial it in about, uh, We'll say about two stops under, which is a good place for the shadows to be. And then we're going to take a shot with the flash. And now we're getting more and more blue. And again, you can do this to taste, whatever you like. We can see that we're getting blue in the shadow. It could be any color, really. We could do green, which I never do on skin tone. So somebody right now is writing in the chat to do green because you have green eyes and because you have green. Don't write it. Like, I know you're about to do it. Don't do it. Let's make it warm. All right. They should put a light on the back of this so you can actually see. All right, so I'm gonna switch. Oh, nope, that's not what I want. I'm gonna switch over to the hue. And I'm gonna come over here and warm it up. Not green, not green. Okay. Again, this is, if you, if you were to like, let's say go uh, on the surface of the sun <laughs> with canes. This, is what, you know, this, this color would be the color of her skin. But again, we're just using it as a fill. It's going to warm up her skin, which is probably too much. So now I think it's too much, right? So because I think it's too much, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to increase my shutter speed, right? Increasing the shutter speed will darken our constant light. The strobe is going to stay the same. The strobe is not affected by the shutter speed. The strobe stays the same. The constant light now is uh, balanced out. So we're just barely getting it in, warming up the skin a little bit, but not in really a super artificial way, even though when you look at her, it looks crazy, crazy bright. Because remember, the flash is super bright compared to the constant light, right? No? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> okay. 
What's going on, chat? What do you want to know? All right, let's go for, let's get the data light out because now, now, we're, now we're moving, right? So I'm going to leave, actually, I'll leave this one set. So now let's combine the data light too. We can, right, for, till this point, I've basically been having everything, you know, more or less at full power with the constant lights. And then we've just been adjusting our shutter speed. But if we use multiple constant lights, we can also, look good, look forward for me. We can also come in here and I can look at this exposure. And again, the way I'm figuring out my exposure, guys, is I'm looking through the camera, you know, it's a mirrorless camera. I'm looking through and I can see where we're at. So I think I need more. Okay, so I need more light from the data. So I'm going to go over here. This is, this is bicolor, this, this data, which, which means it can be anywhere from, you know, like a warm tungsten color to cool, but it can't be like every color. Yeah, so now I've turned it up a little bit and moved it a little bit forward using the inverse square law. Yeah, why not? Is it right in your face? <laughs> I'm literally shining it exactly on stuff. All right, this is just what I've got with the constant lights, which honestly is kind of nice, um, which, you know, looks pretty good. So now that we've got that balance, now let's bring the flash in. And there we go. We've got, I'll have to move your face a little bit, but let's have you, yeah, we'll watch that in a little bit. Yeah, favor it this way. There we go. Good. So now we're getting... Again, separation hair light here. We're getting some warmth into our shadows and we've got the strobe still freezing the action so that anything that, that happens with our movement or whatever will be frozen. So nice and tight, nice and easy, uh, just like that. And of course, obviously we can use the constant lights. If you're nervous about somebody moving, for instance, you can also use constant lights to light up the background, right? This way the light's not on her directly, so it shouldn't really register movement as readily. It still will, obviously, if she moves through the space which she's not really going to do when she's just posing for a portrait. But you can also use it to make, let's say, a slash on the wall. Like that. That's, it's, it's only a slash to you guys, but it's going to be most of the background. There we go. Now we've got a little depth going on there. So there's lots of ways we can play around with this. And it's really just a matter of kind of balancing it out. Again, shutter speed is controlling your constant light exposure for the most part. And the other two, your aperture and your your ISO are, are controlling the flash. Now that's not to say that the ISO and uh, aperture don't affect the constant light, they do, but that, that affects everything. So let's look at that. Let's say for instance that I want all the, let's say my constant lights are turned up all the way and I want the whole thing to go up a little bit brighter. I can actually take my, my aperture now and I was at F8, let's go to 5.6. I'll bring the whole thing up one stop with the constant lights. Now, and I'm gonna actually take the flash and put it in manual and you'll still see what'll happen. So everything will get brighter. Right? Now we're a little kind of hot, which can be a cool look, right? Everything's a bit brighter. But if I bring the flash back in a TTL, so effectively it's gonna be darker. Now I've adjusted the flash power down, but just our constant lights are brighter. Right, so we can see our constant light. Again, balanced flash. In both of these cases, the flash is the same exposure. The same exposure meaning the right exposure because it's TTL. In, but in the second one, the constant lights are both brighter by one stop. Are you ready? Yep. Can you, can you use the setup of the constant light to do a white background for headshots? Would it be easier to make the background more white with a constant light source on it? Okay, so the question is can you make, can you use this to make the background white for headshots? Uh, you know, uh, would it be easier? So if I only had. <laughs> If I had constant light and flash and I had to make a choice, I'd probably use flash on the background as long as your constant lights were strong enough. And the reason why I say this is because the flash is gonna be more powerful, right? So yes, you can. In fact, we'll do it right now. I should be able to get the white background white. This is a gray background, of course, if, it's, if that's not obvious. <laughs> yeah, I think that was, like, like, yeah, we could do that. We could put it right behind her. That feels like way more work, but okay. Seth wants me to do it right. Seth's always over here trying to make me do things the right way. Where's the short? It's... I was just using the short stand. Oh, I know where it is. I hid the short stand because I knew Seth was going to make me do this. 
It's my shorty. It's got like 20 He's like, <laughs> you know stuff is Seth's because uh, he puts his name on it. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to use it. I am going to use it. It's, it's free advertisement Literally, for you. My stand, my camera, my lens, my, my tether cable. I'm using everything of Seth's. That's my stand too right there. <laughs> That's right. Now, you have to ask yourself, who's smarter here? <laughs> <laughs> I like to consider myself a minimalist. No, you're a moocher. It's two different words. This might actually be too tight, but we're going to have to move the whole set forward now because Seth made this difficult. So actually, you can step up for a second. Ah, oh, Seth. <laughs> Seth is making my life difficult again. All right, so yes, we can definitely do this. Let's do a headshot. Cadence can always use a headshot. We can all use a headshot. Seth needs a new one for, what's, what's the new uh, thing? Tinder, is that the thing that you're on? What's the new, what's the new thing? That Tinder thing I so much about. What's, what's that thing that the kids are on? I'm about variety. Variety. Reader's Digest told me about this thing called Match.com. Reader's Digest. My sister still gets a Reader's Digest, so I'm not going to make fun of it. I don't understand why they stopped sending TV Guide. <laughs> <laughs> Is there no more TV Guide? You know that lights still on. Which one? Fish. Yeah, I do. Okay, I'll have you step in now. As close as possible to the light. The only thing I stand like? What's that? <laughs> well, it's mine, it's me. Exactly. I'm a minimalist. So, all right, the, uh, this light, um, this data light is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, just, it's not designed for a very, very wide light for spread. It's more of a focus light, but it's okay. I said we were going to do it. We will do it. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take A, which is that light over there. And I'm gonna, oop, I'm gonna not do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm gonna take my extra light that I have on there, I'm just gonna turn it off. Okay, so that's off, and then B, which is this guy over here, I'm gonna turn this one on. I think, or is it physically turned off? Oh, it's physically turned, okay. Oop, turn this guy on. All right, so now I've just got the one light on. Again, I'm using TTL, and just like always, I'm going to go back to our beginning setup. I'm going to go to 200th of a second. This time I'm going to go 5.6 because I feel like it. Actually, you know what? I'll go at 4. People love shallow, pitch, shallow shots. You guys love it, so I'll give it to you. 200th of a second, F4 with the flash. Okay. You know, it is what it is. It's grayish. I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> It is what it is. That's eh, kidding. She's all right. <laughs> we keep her around. Yeah, so. All right, so we've got that, right? We can see that the background's kind of grayish. And we're like, you're like, oh, no, Daniel, I want a white background. Well, you know, we get, I'm going to hit this button on the top here so I can see the background. And I'm going to just dial myself down to, let's get nuclear. I'm going to go to a 15th of a second. All right. I'm going to come this way slightly uh, with your whole body right there. Good, good, good. Here we go. So now I am at ISO 400, a 15th of a second, um, 5.6, or F4, right? Oh, I think I, hold on. I think I may have focused where it was not. There we go. Let me just see that. I'm just doing the background first. There we go. All right, so I am. I'm getting some of the, I'm getting some kickback, but I, so you'll have to be a little still. That should grab it. No, it's not. I think I. Is it grabbing it? Yeah, it's grabbing it. Let me switch to the other the focus point thing. What's happening is we're getting flare off the background, which is making it very difficult for the camera to focus. Oh, I see what you're Yeah, what's happening is the, the, it's flare because it's overexposed. Check that. Yeah. Is that sharp? No, it's overexposed. The background's too bright, so switch it to single point. I just do that again, this button right here. New camera. 
put it on AFS. Single point. Okay. So if you if you're if you're shooting shooting something that's heavily backlit, especially by a constant light, sometimes it will throw off the the autofocus on your camera. So just uh, oh, you want to change the yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to lock it in our face because what's happening is it gets bouncing around because of the. So, you, but you want to keep it on the eye detection. That's right. If I can. Like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I think it's really reflecting off her. She's getting some motion work. No, there you go. No. Well, no, no, that's sharp. It's sharp, but drunk. Yeah, there you go. Got it. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. So pretend like you didn't see any of that. <laughs> there we go. I mean, there could be a possible motion blur because of, we are getting some, like I, like I showed you up here. Some of this life in the background is kicking forward. So yeah, it's possible. Now, to reverse this idea, right, let's do the opposite because why not? Let's light the background with the flash and then we'll use light her with the constant light. So I'm just gonna take, again, I'm just gonna use a bare head to kind of apples to apple this thing. You know, apples to apples. We won't use a beauty dish. For a moment there, I was gonna use a beauty dish for something. I can't remember what it was. Oh, did we already use the beauty dish? I think we did. Okay. Yeah, we did, right? We're not messing around here, guys. We used a beauty dish already. Yeah, it, can, it, can, it does well focusing in the dark, but whenever you're putting a lot of light into the front of a lens, it's gonna have trouble no, focusing. I'm just saying, like, it, it adjusted and went totally silhouette on her, and yep. it still just focused. Oh, wow. I mean, looking at your contact lens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it was just nuts because you were black. Like, that's yeah. Well, no, but, but see, that's, that just goes to show you that how these cameras operate, right? Yeah, exactly. Heavy, heavy backlit, trouble focusing. Dark, no problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. Yeah. That's really the issue. So, and understanding how the gear works is really going to be important to using it. Uh, you know, if you when you get your Z9, because I'm sure everybody watching this has got a Z9 coming. I'm waiting for mine to come. Never, <laughs> unless somebody wants to buy me one. You can sign up for my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I love that button on the side to let you adjust the thing, though, Sethi. It's so funny because before we started this, Seth showed me how you could adjust that thing on the front, and I was like, oh, so that's a cool feature, but I don't know if I'd ever use it. Now I'm like, that's like the best feature I've ever seen in my life. That button in the front where you just press the button and the flash goes off. I know. I, I'm, <laughs> and now I grab other cameras, and I forget, and I'm going, I'm pressing nothing. I'm like, oh, my God. It's, it's so good. Okay, so, I mean, this isn't exactly apples to apples because it's a different size softbox, and I'm going to do it from the other side. I'm pretty sure you can program on your Z6, too. I have it programmed on mine. There's buttons there on the Z6? Yeah, I knew that. See, Dan's too cool to actually admit that he pays attention to the equipment. I do not read. I don't need to worry about the camera, bro. I make my light. I make the light. I do, I do make the light. I create the light. I am Daniel Norton. Okay, so now we've got the data light. I don't know what I just did there. But if it's good, I'll take credit. Okay, so. If it's good, I'll take credit. We got the... No, I am. All right, all right, guys. So let, let me just walk through this. I was just, you know, some, I saw something good. All right. Okay, so what I'm doing now is, let's just start over so it's not confusing. I know I started getting a little crazy and then... All right, so let's take this one off the screen because this is us not doing things right. All right. With the, the hot light blasting the background, we're only shooting at a 15th of a second but the image is still being pretty much frozen because of the fact that we're primarily letting her with the flash. So yeah, it's very, very possible to do that. However, given the same situation, the same setup, I would do the opposite. And the reason why is because the flash is gonna be so much more powerful, it's gonna be easier to get that background white. And any of that light bouncing around will serve as fill and it won't sl it'll still freeze action. So we got the flash on the background now, I'm gonna turn off the data actually. To, no, I'll start with the data. We're gonna turn the flash off Again, that's in group B, so I'm going to... Wait, explain it again? All right, I'm, I'm explaining it again. Okay, so we're going to start... It, okay, so if you have two lights, a flash and a constant light, if you shoot the constant light at the background, right, as you, as to make it white, 
and then you use the flash as the key, that seems obvious maybe because you freeze the action, but some of the problem becomes that you've got to really crank down your shutter and you might have flare back and any of the light bouncing around the space. You're going to have to go slower on your shutter to get that one constant light to like that huge background white. Whereas I have the same constant light in a softbox. I'm going to put it super close to her. I'm not going to have to go nearly as slow on the shutter, I'm guessing. We're going to find out in a second. The flash is so much more powerful, right? It's going to hit the background. It's going to blow that background out. And then any of the light that bounces around the space isn't going to make any motion blur because it's flash light that's bouncing, yeah. right? You gain control. You gain control. I gain control. All right, so we're going to start with the dado. So uh, again, same exposure to start with. I'm going to, I can see that when I press this little button that we were just talking about on the side, she's super overexposed. So I'm going to take my shutter speed and dial it up until the dado has a proper exposure. Yes, and let's kill the overhead as well. Thank you. All right. Okay, so I'm going to basically dial this in until it looks like I have an exposure that I like. Uh, looks to me to be 80th of a second F4. So instead of a 15th, we're at an 80th. I'm going to come in. I'm going to focus again. Oh, what fired? Oh, I didn't turn that one off. Well, we got a gray background, which is kind of nice. How come? Isn't that the B group? I don't know why it started off. Is that A? Oh, it's A. OK, I thought that was the B group. That's why. OK, sorry, guys. So I turned the wrong flash off. Let's turn that one off. OK. Again, I've got the one flash, one light on it, the data light. I'm at 80th of a second, right? And now we've got basically beautiful creamy light. It's an 80th, so it's going to still be fast enough if she's not moving around too much to be able to basically light her up and make it look nice. Of course, the background is dark. Now I can hit the background with as much flash as I feel like it. That's the A group, so I'm going to turn that on. I could do TTL, but the way TTL works is TTL is, it wants to always make your uh, make your, your exposure gray. And since we don't want gray, we want white, I'm going to overexpose the background. I'm just going to, I'm going to look at it. It's set at one. I'm going to say that's probably not a good place to put it. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to manual. Like six yeah, I'm going to go to manual. I'm going to bring it up to, I never use the flash like this. <laughs> you just press it like that and turn it. It seems confused. I'm just going to walk up to it. Well, that's because you made this light 3A, Dan. You made your flash here 3A. That's why. This ah, is... Oh, this is also 3A. OK, that's why. So watch. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this group F. Yeah, make that group F. Thank you. OK, so what happened was I had the, the, the flash, even though I wasn't yeah, using it, the on-camera flash. Head off. That one off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, sorry. Thanks, Seth. So basically what happened there, guys, just so you do know, um, the, you remember I said this is a flash, it's on top of the camera. I wasn't using it, but I actually had it in the same group as that one, so when I was changing it, it was adjust, adjusting. All right, so I'm just going to put that one, this one's at five, so in the middle. And it's an A. Okay, it's firing. All right, so let's just do a test. This is both lights now. We should be getting some light back there. There we go, yeah. And now we can see that, again, it's sharp because of the constant light. Our background is way white. Um, and actually, we even have some fill, right? Because again, I'm in a white studio, so light's bouncing around, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm actually going to. OK, so what if you didn't have color changing constant lights, but just whatever the ambient was, or only had tungsten lights? I know you can get a gel for the flash, but sometimes it's hard to get the colors to match. Oh, OK, matching light. That's a good question. So, well, you do a there, so you kind of yeah, I mean, so you've got a few options, really, um, if you're going to try to match light in a space. Like, if I'm in here and I'm using this ugly light, let's say, what I can do is, since I did mention at the beginning that ambient was a similar thing, I, I am now required to use this. So, if we're here and I can see the light here is, is weird. If I were to go auto white balance, for instance, what we'll, what we'll end up with is a, a properly like color uh, image, but then our flash will be off, right? So what we really want to do is make an image uh, in, uh, in auto white balance. Oh, I don't even know how to do this on this camera. I'm just going to explain it. <laughs> this feels like a tutorial video, but I'm going to try to explain it. 
What you, what you want to do is, if, if I want to get the color of the light in this space, I don't have a color meter, the simplest way to do it is just to photograph something gray, right? And then tweak it out. So, yeah, so we just got to put it in. Um, what do you want? Oh, actually, you can just step out. Just shoot the background. Forget about water. But I'll just do it this way. This is the simplest way to do it. I just want to take a picture of the background with, with just the ambient light. So a proper exposure. Put it in like automatic mode. Does the camera have that? What are you trying? Like what, P what or about? something. Oh. I just want the light in the space to light the background. Oh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an exposure of the background. Now, again, this is not a gray card, so it's not going to be perfect, but this will just give you an idea. No flash or anything. I just want this light in the space. <laughs> you got to turn everything off. Yeah. Okay. This is an exposure of the background. It's a little dark, but it's fine. Okay, so what we would do is we're going to come over here, and then uh, I'm going to actually just take my my white balance here, and what you would do is you can actually sample off this, right? So we're looking at, it's gonna have to reduce the, the white balance by about 400 to get to where we want it to go. See this drop down to 4600? This again might be a better tutorial video because it might be hard to explain here, but what we're gonna do is, that being the case, we know that our flash would need to be warmed up, right? Warmed up, because we're going down, about 400. So then you could take a, a slice of gel, right? and warm the gel up 400, it would match the space. Does that make sense? I'm gonna do the whole thing one more time. Here we go, pay attention. I'm gonna do a video on this, I think, but I'll just explain. Actually, I think Mark Wallace today just put out a video on white balance. Mark Wallace put out a video today on white balance, but let me just quickly explain it again, just if it's, if it's unclear. What we're doing is we're photographing something ideally neutral. In this case, this gray background is not perfectly neutral, but just for an example. Once we photograph the neutral subject, we're gonna go into Capture One, we're gonna correct the white balance for it. Right? What that's gonna do is remove the ugly color from this space. If we look at the correction that Capture One made, we can then apply that correction to our flash, which will then add all the ugliness, right, to our flash, so that all the light's the same ugly color, and then you take it all out in a color correction. So that's basically how you do it. You, you make the flashlight ugly, essentially, to match it. Right, you can also do it in camera gray card, exactly. You can do it a lot of different ways, but I like to do it in capture one because the reason why is because I can see the number there. Like I can see what it corrected, right? It corrected, um, it went down because my, my shot it at 5,000, right? So it went down 400 and it also added uh, 13, 13 green, I think is what it added to, to correct it. You see right here? No, it added 9.3 9 magenta. So that might be hard to see. But basically, and again, that's a lot to be adding, right? Magenta and stuff. But if you really need to match light in a space, that's the right way to do it. I think you'll be close enough if you just match the color temperature. So in other words, these lights are somewhere in the vicinity of about 4,600, right, based on this, which means that we need to warm our flash down to get it there, if that makes sense. But that's a totally different subject and kind of a little confusing, maybe, hopefully not. It is. A, I will actually make a video on it because it's a little bit easier to, to show. And I'll use an actual white, a, a gray card. Because the problem is this background is not actually gray, so it's not a perfect way to do it. But anyways, that's basically it. What you want to do is make a shot of something neutral, figure out what you have to adjust to make that neutral correct, and then put those adjustments onto your flash. Now, if you don't have a whole bunch of gels for your flash, you might not be able to do that. And in that case, being realistic, if you're out on a job, you do what looks the best, right? A lot of times, just warming your flash up a little bit to match the light in the space makes more sense than just banging things with flash and letting it go warm. I mean, it, it kind of comes down to the look you want. Or you get more flashes to fill up the room. Yeah, or you can fill the room with flashes. It really depends on what you're doing, right? If you're doing an event or something, you're not going to be able to do that, you know, necessarily. But if you're doing a commercial project, you'll try to eliminate the light. You know, normally what you want to do on any kind of commercial project is get rid of as much of the light as you can, right? The ideal place to start is when you shoot your shutter, no exposure, unless, well, in this camera, there's no shutter. When you take your picture, <laughs> there should be no exposure except for the light that you add. That's the ideal. And even, the, in, even in this case, uh, we're not there, right? Did you put it back to where we were? Yeah, we well, did, right? Like, if I take a picture with just the overhead lights, or not, yeah, right? Flash. Right, we can see there's still light here. Oh, the flash went off. Okay, hold on. Hold the yeah, I'm holding it, and I'm pressing the button. There we go. 
um, we can see there's still an exposure, right? So it's not like when we shot the shot with the data light and the flash that there wasn't some room light involved in that shot. That's because, well, if we had left them on, that's why I turned them off, right? In fact, if I hadn't moved the lights, we'll do it again. Let me show you the difference. If we bring this back over, is that where you are? You, have you not moved the whole time? No, I moved. Oh, okay, I didn't know. I was like, I'm not sure if you moved or not. I'm, I'm turning the light on. She's gonna look right at it. <laughs> as soon as you tell somebody to turn the light on, they will always look right at it. That is the rule. Yeah. Nope. All right, we're moving all these things back. No, no, let's leave that on. I wanna see the difference. You'll see that if you mostly overpower the light in the space that we probably won't have a problem, exposure-wise. You know, she still looks more or less correct. She's a little bit overexposed now because of the light in the space, right? So if I were to, again, press this button here, I can actually bring that down. Hold on, is that firing? No, this is just the one that's firing. Right? There we go. Oh, I'm on the weird white balance. There we go. There we go. Now I'm back. He's back. And it's a little bit off though. It's still off a little bit because if we do exactly that and then we do this. What we're going to find is that this will be a little cleaner. Right? This is letting some of the room light into the shot. And this is not. And I mean, I know it's probably hard to see in a live stream, but you can see that the skin tone almost looks a little bit, because of the fact that uh, Cadence has, uh, much like me, a kind of a paler skin tone that has red in it, when you have these like LEDs that are kind of like greenish weird, what you end up getting is it removes the color from your skin. So you end up looking more pale, essentially. So you, uh, you get extra pale. If you want extra pale, that's how you get it. <laughs> It, it's kind of, because it, it, people are like, you look green, but the thing is, if you have reddish skin, you don't necessarily look green, you just don't look red anymore, which makes you look flat, which makes you look unnatural. Mm. Or really blown out if you like that look. You know, kind of comes down to what you're going for. Cool. All right, any other questions? I know we went kind of a sideways there, but that was actually a really good question and something that probably requires an entire video to cover white balancing. But in a practical way to think about it is, try your hardest to remove as much of the light from the space as possible. That's really the key. Or work with what's there and then adjust the lights you have to suit them. So if we were shooting in here and I wanted to use the dado and the light in the space, what I would try to do is get her out of the greenish light as much as possible. So for instance, we can do that as well. We get a, we get a minute to do that, right? Yeah. So let's say we want to leave these lights on. I'll kill the flash for a second. We'll do one final thing, which is not exactly the, the demo, but I feel like it's important. We're going to use the data light for our, our key light. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna shoot with the light in the space as well. So if I want the, the back, now of course the background will never be super white because I'm going above, but let's say we wanna use all the light in the space, but we want the background to be a bit brighter. What we can do is come down, let's say we'll get it around there, and then we're gonna come over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card, I may need to, I might need Seth to help me too. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to need two of them because I'm going to try to cut. I'm effectively um, going to make a cutter. So I'm turning this down. I'm just looking at my camera to get it. To where I want it, about right there. And then I'm going to come over here. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually going to try to get her out of the green light as much as possible, right? So it's coming in from these two directions. So could you help me with this or are you good? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I know you were doing something. If not, I'll put it on a stand. But it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm going to put it on a stand. Yeah, why not? I'll do it. You're right. We should do it right way. Let's do it the right way, like they do in Hollywood. This is like a marathon demo. Seth is all about doing things the right way. That is, that is 100% correct. 
That is 100% correct. Never be a lazy day. Don't be a lazy Well, I'd rather black if we have one. I was just using. No, I don't want bounce. I want all cutter. Because it's what was standing there. Again, I was being lazy. This tough guy. Black is what we want. What we're going to do here, and again, I don't recommend this unless you absolutely have to, <laughs> is we're going to try to. Oh, oh this stand is too tall. I want to cut as I want to cut these ugly lights from hitting her. So I want to tent her like this. You want to do a horizontal Yeah, if you can. This stand is too tall because it's that ridiculously tall stand. So I have to now switch this out. I don't like that stand. Yeah. I always grab the wrong stand. So exactly, as much as possible. I can actually see that light's hitting her. So raise it. Or get it in closer. Actually, if you can get it as close as possible, like right next to her, as, as much closer as you can. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Thank you, sir. OK, good. So again, this is not a perfect solution, but it gives you an idea of how you could do this. What we're going to do is, if we don't have control of the light in the space, what we're going to try to do is cut as much of it away from her as possible. This is not negative fill. <laughs> this is blocking the light. It's different. Negative. <laughs> right. Negative fill is something different. OK, so what we're going to do is, there we go. We, I turned that light off. I just want to show you guys. If we get the background where we want it, let's say there, we can see that she is going to be, did a flash go off when I did that? What flash is fire? Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah, I got too many things going on. OK, so what we're going to do, let's do it one more time. So we're getting our background, and we can see that. Let's actually give me. I'm going to give myself some more shutter. I'm going to go down to a fifteenth of a second. And the goal here is to get the background brightish. It's not going to be white, right? But as little light as possible on her. So see how we've cut away a lot of the light on her. It's not all gone, but we can definitely see that she has that kind of ugly color of light on her. But now we're going to overpower that light with our good light, right? <laughs> you have ugly light on ugly you. Ugly light on. Right, which is the ugly light. So I'm going to turn this guy on. And the goal here basically is going to be to get the exposure on this light to be bright enough to have it look nice. And hopefully, so this is a dimmer on it. And I'm just going to dim it down. Oh, actually, I'm using, <laughs> that's the color temperature. Leave that where it was. I'm going to use the dimmer on this to get the light. So that's nice like that. All right, here we go. There we go. So now what we've done is, is it perfect? Is that exactly perfect skin tone? No, but we've taken away a lot of the ugliness of the room light. And so that she at least has clean light on her. So, you know, the background is not going to be the right color, obviously. The only way it could be is if we were to, like if I took this and sampled the background, right? And now we see that she's like too like pinky, right? I could actually use the, oh, I could use the Kelvin here. I do have a passport color checker on here. Yeah, 46. So I could take this and actually warm up. So again, this is a color changing light. So I could theoretically come in here and drop it down 400, like I had said before. You know, so now, of course, I had already hit the white balance, right? So now we can see that her skin is, I think you moved slightly as I did it, but you can see her skin now is not overly warm compared to the, the scene. You can do the before and after one too. Yeah. So if you do this, see? Yep, exactly, yep. I mean, that's, wow, that's a... Yeah. Yeah, so we can see that, you know, on the one side, you've got this kind of murky, uh, orangey weirdness, right? We kind of color corrected that away, and now we've got pretty light on her face that looks good and gives her good color. Um, you know, as good as possible. It's a little on the magenta side, but with this light, I mean, I don't have the ability to really adjust that, and I'm just, you know, that's something you'd have to finesse out in, in post. But at least you can get it close so that it looks good, you know, pretty good on camera. And the, what we're doing here is removing 
as much of this ugly light as we possibly can. I mean, and if I really had to do it, and I was shooting a super important portrait here, and I had all day or some time to really set it up, I would block as much of this as I could. I'd take more black cards here. I'd literally build a tent, get her as dark as possible. But how else can I remove all the light in the space? Flash. And that's why when we're photographers, right, what we want to use is we want to mix the light, right? We can do this exact same thing, and now I can come in, because again, I'm mixing the light with the light in the space. Oh, actually, I'm still going to leave this here. I'll still leave this here, block as much as possible, because I'm still going to drag the shutter, right? And the final thing that we'll do here is swap out to a flash. <laughs> I'm cry. <laughs> We'll swap to a flash, and we can do it exactly the same way. Now, I'm not going to leave all the shutter speed and stuff the same because I want that background, right? But I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go, this is the B group. So I'm going to go to TTL. Take A and turn it off again, because I turned the flash off, so it reset itself. So I should just fire that one light. Yep, all right, here we go. And now we're gonna get a nice, clean flash picture, right? We're still picking up some of that light from the space. I can't adjust the color temperature of the flash, right? So in this case, the constant light gives us that advantage, right? But with the flash, I'm able to overcome this space. And again, if I had more than one flash, I could literally get rid of all the light like I've done before. I could take my shutter speed, crank it up to 200th of a second. And boom, you know, this is just light from the flash. Actually, I have that weird, I have that weird white balance on. Hold on, that's why it's looking weird. I'm like, why is it white balance? There we go. And now we've got, let's come back here and do that again. I can actually see. There we go. There we go. And now we've got, again, sharp, clean light from the flash. And we can, of course, mix it with the constant light like we did before. We can work our way all the way back through the whole series of stuff. You can do any combination of these things, right? But given the choice, if I was trying to blow up my background, I'd use the flash because it's more powerful. It's going to give you more control of your space. Use the constant light to shape and mold. I personally find that Lights like these dado lights are actually nicer for portraits. I actually love the way the light comes out of it. Sorry for photo. I would use the dado lights for a portrait any day if I had the ability to control my space. But having the ability to control your space with the flash is so powerful that as a photographer, we want to know how to use both sources and mix them together. So I will put uh, Kane's information. Can we do that? In the description, we'll throw it in after the fact. Do we, do we? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I put her in because I'm lazy. But we can write it in the, this is at Caden Frank. Follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer. <laughs> uh, follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer. Make sure you subscribe to Adorama TV. Ring the bell so you get notifications. I will be back on the 27th uh, of January for a demo on using small flashes. So if you're interested in small flashes, come back for that one. It should be really fun. Uh, again, there's links to all the gear in the description if you want to look up any particular thing we used. Or if you have a question about a piece of gear I use that isn't in the description, write a comment and I will come back and check it out.